to bring it into being. It's not just a case of sit there and wait for it, like in case your lottery numbers come up and it'll land on your lap. That's not the way heaven works. It's an invitation, and you are invited to participate. Joshua and Caleb, they went as spies with ten others, didn't they? To see what the land looked like. The other ten saw it very differently to Joshua and Caleb. They came back with the eyes that God had given them to see with. They saw the fruit in the land and they did not receive the fear from their fellow spies. The other spies who saw the land felt that they were like grasshoppers and they didn't see the fruit, they didn't see the inheritance. That's Numbers 13 if you want the reference for that. So my question tonight for you is who do you see? When you look in the mirror, who do you see? Do you see a timid kitten cowering or do you see a lion of glory? Do you see a timid person or do you see a warrior? A warrior bride, a victorious person. Who do you see when you look in the mirror? Have you taken on board what others have said? Have you taken on board what heaven says? So look a little bit at the story of David who fought Goliath. A familiar story, but some of the things as I read it um, in preparation for today, I saw uh, some things that I hadn't taken notice of before, so maybe it will be the same for you. When David fought Goliath, not one of the Israeli soldiers saw Goliath in the way that he did. Not one of them saw themselves in the victorious way that he did. His father didn't even see David in the way that heaven saw David. He discounted him when the prophet Samuel came and said, who are your sons? You know, give me your sons. He didn't even think to pull David out of the field. Some of us here in this room and some of us watching may have felt unnoticed by others. We may have felt discredited by others. My encouragement for you tonight is if that is the case, then choose to break agreement with what others have said over your life and choose to come into agreement with what heaven says over your life. David in the secret place of the fields where he went back to for a time incidentally, knew who his God was. And when he came to fight Goliath, Goliath had been taunting the Israel army for 40 days. He came out every day. What does 40 days represent? Who else do we know who was in a place on a mountain where he was taunted by the enemy for 40 days? Jesus. So Goliath, who incidentally was 10 feet tall, wearing quite um, significant armour, was going out every day. You've got the Israelites on one side, a valley in between, and the Philistine army with Goliath on the other side. And he would go out every day, taunting them. And it came to a place in verse 24 where the Israelites fled in terror. He didn't take notice of what other people were doing. He said, who's the man that he should defy the armies of the living God? Saul had called for him and he had a conversation with him where Saul said, you can't go and fight him. You're only a teenager. And Goliath has been a warrior since his youth. In other words, what Saul was saying was, Goliath is experienced, he's big, he's mature, and he's experienced, and you're just a teenager. We may have had those experiences in our own lives. Maybe in school, you were seen as somebody timid. Some
to, to mock, somebody to ridicule, somebody not seen after the eyes of God, if that was the case, then I encourage you to step out of that, step out of those words, out of that identity, and into the identity of who God says you are. Because David said to Saul, I have had victories in the field with lions and with bears. I have even taken lambs out of their mouths. He said, the Lord delivered me from their paws and he'll do the same with this Philistine. He knew who his God was and he knew who he was victoriously. And he learns it in the secret place and that's a key for all of us. If we can find out who God is in the secret place when nobody else is watching, we will find out more of who we are and who he says we are. When Goliath said to David, am I a dog that you should come to me with sticks? David said in reply, I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts. And this day, the Lord will deliver you into my hands, and I will smite you and cut off your head. Do you have any enemies whose heads you need to cut off? Do you have any voices inside of your head that you need to cut off? Those voices that say, you're not good enough. You made a mistake yesterday. You won't be able to do that. Have you been disappointed? Have you been disappointed with yourself or with others? I encourage you tonight, or whenever you're watching, remove the dis and be reappointed. That's the word of the Lord for you in this moment of time. Be reappointed because I have appointed you. That's what he says over you and over me. David was anointed to be king over Israel in 1 Samuel 16. But that didn't happen straight away. He had to walk in his identity, no matter what others were saying, until the appointed time. We have all had, I'm sure, a number of us at least, have had those prophetic words that have not yet come to pass. And it's important that we keep declaring them, keep partnering with them, no matter what is manifesting around you, no matter what your circumstances say, at this point in time, hold on to those words that the Lord has decreed over your life. Those words that he's decreed over your family, over your community, over your nation. Words, I believe there are people here tonight, the Lord has given you words over this nation. Words over other nations you haven't yet seen come to pass. And I encourage you, speak them out. If you, if you feel to, go to a mountain, go to a field and shout them out. Declare them loudly and boldly and walk in it. Walk in what the Lord has shown you. We've had prophetic words spoken over us as a family, over us as a couple. Um, some of you may have heard me say last time, I think, Sean Bowles prophesied over us in 2017 amongst a crowd of 3,000 people by name. He called us out. And we are still waiting for the fulfillment, the full manifestation. But I am not giving up. I've watched some of it come to pass already and I'm holding on to the rest and I continue to decree it out because it's the word of the Lord over my life, over my husband's life and over my family's life. And I boldly say over each of you, hold on to the prophetic words that you have had. Jane, as you were worshipping tonight, I saw some of the prophetic mantles that you had over your life and some of them have kind of been laying dormant for a season and I believe the Lord's brought you here tonight to stir them up again. Some of 
It's no accident, by the way, for everybody that's here tonight. You are here by divine appointment. And for, for David, sitting here in the front row, I want to say thank you for being here. I know that you've had a busy week, but you being here with what you carry, you have brought something. And as Alan and I were worshipping tonight, we came together and I said, I know that because we are here, and by the way, for those that don't know, we've been praying together for 20 odd years, and there's been some things that the Lord has shown us apostolically for this region. And tonight, over this group, over this area, the mantle that is carried for this area, we saw some things coming into divine alignment. Those are the words that Alan had and came into agreement with. Divine alignment. There are some things that are shifting tonight. It's stirring. Not completely there, but there are some things that are shifting and coming more into alignment. And there's some more things I have to say for this, this place tonight. I encourage you with those prophetic words. Psalm 105, verse 19, in the Passion Translation, is speaking of Joseph and God's promises over his life. And it says, God's promise to Joseph purged his character until it was time for his dreams to come true. There's a season of preparation for the prophetic words to come true. When God has spoken something over your life, there's the reason that we need to partner is we need to develop our character further so that we can carry the fullness of what he has for us. There's so much, so much that he has for us to do. Here in our nation, in, in our geographical places and wherever else, we're called to be. And as I looked around the room tonight and I counted us, we are more than the 12 disciples that Jesus had. And look what the 12 began. Think on that. What can we do? What are we called to do? There's more of us here. Revelation 3, verse tw uh, 21 in the Amplified Bible says, he who overcomes the world through believing that Jesus is the Son of God, I will grant. 
Jesus said, you will be a fisher of men. And he walked in his God-given identity. Yes, he made mistakes, but he rose above them. So that's my encouragement. For the sake of time, we won't go into all of the words spoken over generations, but I encourage you, go back and go home at Wikipedia and look at the words that the media have spoken over different generations. So for instance, people born between 1928 and 1945 were called the silent generation or the traditionalists. It was a low birth rate era, more economically healthy and people ate more healthily than the following generation. Generation me, born between 1965 and 1980, were known as the latchkey kids for free-range parenting and have experienced many more divorced parents than the previous generations. There were more mums out to work and they were characterised as slackers. So the word over the generation that I was born in, the negative word that's been spoken your latchkey kids. You, the music genres were, were, were quite strong in tribal identity. There was punk, there was hip hop. I was a mod in my time, black and white, everything, including my nails. There was heavy metal, but there was a great sense of tribal community. People's families had broken down, so they were looking for family elsewhere. Generation Z, Gen Z, as they say in America, also known as the Zoomers, were born 1997 to 2012. Interestingly, it says there was less sexual activity, but more sexting. Anybody know what sexting is? I didn't. That's texting, but with sexual connotations in the, in the messages. Less teen pregnancy, less more diagnoses of mental health conditions and sleep deprivation. But God. The media has got a lot to answer for in its declaration over generations. <coughs> but what does God say? So I'll give you one of them. A lady called Jessica Tate, who is uh, an incredible modern day missionary. She's taken loads of young people loads of people across different nations into war zones and so on. She's a bit like a younger version of Heidi Baker. She was talking to the Lord about Gen Z, or Gen Z as she calls them, and he said, but what do I say? What do I say over that generation? He called them the Bartimaeus generation. And so she's written a book called The Bartimaeus Generation. So that's by Jessica Tate. So you can look at what God says about the people born in this era. era. If, you are, if you have a particular passion to reach out to a certain generation or speak words over a certain generation, ask the Lord, what does he say? And declare it out. For example, he says over all of us that he's a father to the fatherless. So over my generation, who grew up with the most uh, homes without a father in them, I decree that we are a fathered generation by our Heavenly Father. 
hear things spoken about people that are famous, I encourage you, don't just listen to what the media says. Ask the Father, what does he say? What does he say about Prince Harry and, and Meghan, who are in the news right now? Don't just listen and repeat what the media says. Cancel it out. Have none of it and declare what the Father says. may not be what God 
God has called you into. You may be a creative, whereas um, your other family members were more academic. And then you may feel like you're a black sheep. You're not. You're just different. So take on board what heaven says about you. So, I don't know, if you haven't been that close to me, you might not have seen, but I'm wearing a bracelet that a friend, I don't know where she got it from, but it says prophet on it. I had to be courageous last year at the age of 56 because the Lord got hold of me and said, will I accept my calling and speak it out? Because I would accept it if other people said it, but I wouldn't be bold and say it over myself. You could be a pastor, that's okay to say that. You could even say you're a teacher in the church, that's okay. Maybe even a stretch, you can say you're an evangelist. But if you declare that God has shown you that you're an apostle or a prophet, and there are many, I know there are many out there claiming their own titles that are not walking in what God says, they're walking in what they think. But if the Lord has spoken to you and he says you're an apostle or you're a prophet, it's important that you take it on board and that you own it. So last year the Lord said to me, Michelle, you are a prophet. And quite crossly said, own it or you won't walk in it. So I had to make a choice. And as I did that, something shifted within me. And how other people have received me. So for the first time in my life, my pastor, I've been part of different churches and never been called out as a prophet by my pastor. Yes, by other ministers, by other ministries. But my pastor said, I recognize you as a prophet in the church and thank you for staying. That was huge. And I believe huge for the church because that was not um, previously a recognized thing. One day I heard somebody say that the Lord called them a different name to the name that they were born with. And their question was, what does the Lord call you? That's what they spoke out in the message. So I went home and thought, hmm, I'm going to ask him. So I asked the Lord, what do you call me? Who do you say I am in heaven? I didn't hear for several months, but I woke up one morning in Kenya and heard the audible voice of God say, Michelle Beryl. By birth, I'm called Michelle Lynn. Michelle is a question, who is like God? Lynn is a river, so not bad. But interestingly, I have an auntie Beryl, who my mum is very close to, and I wonder, should she have taken my auntie Beryl's name and given that to me as a middle name? I don't know, but that's what the Lord calls me. So I went on a journey of asking the Lord all about it. Beryl is the eighth stone on the priest's ephod. It's used for the healing of eyes and legs. It's actually ground down and used medicinally, and it goes with my gifting. I'm a seer, and I release other people into part of their walk, part of their destiny. So you can see that heaven has got something to say over your life. There are heavenly scrolls written about each one of us. What does God say on the scroll over your life? What does God say on the scroll over your town, over your community, over our nation, over nations that you're called to? You can ask, I believe, he will show you in the appointed time. What is the heavenly scroll for your family, your family mandate? You can ask. So I was asking the Lord, what does he say over Angles Way filling station? <laughs> I heard quite clearly, you are a worshipping 
community who shifts atmospheres. Then I saw, as I sat and just allowed that to soak in and asked the Lord what else he wanted to show me, I saw angels assigned specifically to you guys in Angles Way. You will have your own angelic assignment individually, but there are angels assigned to you as a corporate body for the things that you do here in shifting atmospheres. They are activated as you release the sound. And tonight was so powerful as we worshipped together. We, honestly, we could have stayed there. And I really feel that the Lord, I, I saw a well, I don't know if you saw me at the back, but I was stirring, I felt the Lord say, stir the waters yes. of the well. Yes. Yes. yes, you saw it, Jane, so also saw it. Word. Yeah. The angel is stirring the waters. Yeah, it's great. Thank you, Jane, for the confirmation. And I believe that the Lord would also encourage you that when, you, I mean, you've had a number of significant speakers here and they all carry something different. But when you invited John Scotland here to open up the ancient paths, he didn't know that that was what he was coming to do until he asked the Lord. But he came in his mantle as a prophet to open up the ancient paths. And I believe from that moment, something shifted in a way that it hadn't previously, and it's going to continue to shift. So that's my encouragement to you. I believe that we are all invited to much deeper heavenly encounters and lifestyle as we partner with what heaven says over us and who God's decrees we are in heaven and heaven comes into agreement with who you are. They know who you are. I, I know I said here last time, but not everybody was here. I've been living in Ephesians 3, 16 for the last 18 months. I cannot get away from it. I don't want to, but it's part of my, my everyday journey. And I'll, I'll just speak it out to you, and then we're going to pray. It is, unveil, so I personalise it, unveil within me the unlimited riches of your glory and favour until supernatural strength floods my innermost being with your divine might and explosive power. And I encourage you as you seek the Lord for the scripture that he has for you, something to, to meditate. You may have more than one, but I encourage you, meditate, get a hold of one, like really come into agreement with that one because as you continue to speak it out, each word from the verse will drop into your spirit man, become part of you and you will live it out here on earth. And I'm privileged to say that people have witnessed it growing in me without me telling them they've witnessed it because I, it's my desire that more and more the Lord is glorified through my life. So I encourage you to finish. This is a statement. So this is my journal. And nearly every day, this is what I decree as I feel God's given over me. So I, I give it to you as a, as a pattern. You can go away and ask the Lord what he says over you. So I declare, I'm a daughter of the King. I'm called to influence the influencers, to shepherd the shepherds, to be a prophet to the nations, especially the UK, Kenya, and the USA. I release destiny in others and set captives free. I have a voice, I will be heard. Favour with God and man belongs to me. 
Doors of favour and influence are open to me to walk through. I am called to sit with key leaders and kings, influencing the course of churches, cities and nations. I encourage you, what does the Lord say over you? So we'll have a time, I don't know if the, the worship team can just come back up and play for a moment. And if you want to come forward for prayer, I will pray for you. I will um, I'll ask the Lord for some prophetic words, some words of knowledge to give to individuals tonight. And I will partner with heaven and deliver them.